Hello everyone, welcome back to Space Mechanic Simulator, where I will continue to get my certifications in various things, and we will see how that goes, while also picking up some missions along the way to pay for those certifications. Uh, we are in version 1.0.3. Most of the fixes are not relevant to what I've gotten to so far. I didn't get very far into things, uh, which was probably for the best, so that the fixes can come in before I have any issues. But um, we have to load game. Load game. Okay. I have encountered an issue. <laughs> Hold on. Let, load. Okay. Let me try and start. Okay. Start. Well, this is the very beginning. I've had to disconnect my throttle again and neutralize the throttle on my joystick. But we're still sort of drifting to one side. That's because I can't neutralize the throttle exactly right. So that's a little bit annoying, but we can use our thruster to solve that. Load game here. Okay, well, all right. We are presumably are picking up where we left off. Okay, diagnostics level two, electronics level one. Well, that requires electronics level 1, electronics 2. Electron everything requires electronics, nothing requires diagnostics. So, okay, but electronics level 1 requires diagnostics 3, so okay, fine. I guess we have to do this. Talk about thermal imaging. Well, that was too quick. Pick up infrared camera from your toolbox. Infrared camera. Three basic operation modes. Okay, to switch mode, you can press M1 on your infrared camera. M1. Reference. Fixed range mode. This is the basic mode of operation. Camera will show temperatures within configured range. Temperatures that are outside of this range will be displayed in blue for colds or whites or hot. If you are seeing too much blue or not enough blue, you should alter minimum range setting by holding L1 or L2 on your camera. So that changes the range. Close valve TSTV. Now watch pumps and pipes. You will see that they get cooler, as there's no flow in them. That's sort of neat. Of course, valves, uh, of course, valves are not the only thing that can stop flow. A blocked pipe can do the same, so the infrared camera can help you locate blocked pipes simply by looking for a point on the pipe where there's some, there's a sudden drop in temperature, or sudden temperature to drop is fine. Have a look at Electric Box TST EB1. Note that you can see devices inside of it have power, uh, since you can see the heat on the cover. This does not necessarily mean that devices work as expected, but at least we know there's no issue with the power supply. Good point. Other modes. So, reference mode. This mode is useful when you're uh, looking for a specific temperature range. You can set the desired reference temperature and everything that has this temperature will be painted white, while things that are different from the reference value will be colored differently until they fall out of range defined by the margin setting. Everything cooler or hotter by that margin or more will be painted blue. Okay, feel free to play around with the settings or switch to FOV setting, I understand. Field of view setting. This mode is not actually an operating mode of the camera in the strictest sense. Image displayed will be the same as fixed range mode, but on this screen you will only you can only regulate camera's field of view using L1 or L2. So we can zoom out, basically. <laughs> Functionally speaking, that's handy. Okay, measure mode. And it'll stay there. Measure mode has no settings. It simply gives you the exact temperature value measured at the center of the screen. Okay. It's useful when you want a precise reading. That's about it. Infrared camera may not be necessary to diagnose problems and may not provide decisive information. Oh gosh. 
but it's certainly a useful tool. I, I think it's the most useful thing since the schematics. Uh, but uh, that's why most mechanics like to keep it handy for time-sensitive encounters. Oh no, not time-sensitive encounters. I was enjoying the luxury of not having time-sensitive encounters. Okay. Am I getting that pipe? Should be open now, right? So, stuff should be getting warmer in there? So, they didn't say we're done done, but I guess we can put the panel back on. Okay, fly away time. 10,000 for Diagnostics Level 3! We better do some other mission first. No power. Quite a leak. It's me, space... Well, let me just get the one that pays best. I guess that is the no power one. Okay. Oh, well, let's, yeah, let's finalize that mission. And no power. Repair battery. Well, these are really highlighted now. Oh, we don't... Well, we'll have to reset the controllers anyway, so I might as well remove that too. Okay. Simply replacing batteries. But that happens too. That does happen. Okay, battery. Need a bit more rubber. And a little bit more plastic. Repairing batteries is... Sounds complicated, but okay. Okay, we've got a battery at 100% there. If I wanted to buy one, it's pretty expensive, so repairing is definitely better. Okay, battery in, cover on. Okay, and then reset buttons. And, uh, well... Hmm. They're all looking pretty cool. Oh, no, they're warming up. They're warming up. Look at that. And the one that warmed up first was the first one I turned on. That I reset. Oh, that's pretty neat. Okay. Okay, mission accomplished. No biggie. We still are doing missions that require less than our maximum certifications or whatever. Okay, mission finalize. Confirm. Okay, so... That's a little bit, but... Oh, this is 3,601. Three, uh, something is dripping. Okay. Yeah. Let's get that. I mean, if we're gonna have to pay 10,000 for the next training. Repair pipe. That's probably not all we have to do. At some point, there'll be like the panel on the opposite side of the object. Or something. Okay, probably should close this first. Hey, let's use the IR scanner. We could also use Tom Top. Well, it looks pretty cool. Okay, well that pipe is at 0%. Anything else we should know about? Well, it's not telling me. And I don't... They, they aren't requiring me to diagnose things, so... Gotta do more than I'm being paid for. Wait, we're pretty high up over Earth this time, huh? That's gonna require a lot of steel, so that's gonna be expensive to repair. Yeah, very much so. Um, trade... That one. It's cheap to buy, though. We, only, we can only buy one, though. But yeah. Let's just recycle that. Cannot be recycled. Gosh darn it. Okay, fine. Okay, put the nice pipe in. Bracket on. Okay, turn that back on. Are we happy? It's not saying anything. It's not saying it's happy. Well, maybe if I put the panel on. Okay, mission accomplished. So it was easier than I thought it would be. 
definitely going to be overthinking things now that we've been introduced to all these other elements, but I haven't gotten the chance to practice with them, right? Like, with the palm top and the IR camera, I haven't gotten the chance to actually use them properly to solve problems yet. Well, anyway, two missions is good enough before we go on to the next training. I'll take the risk of picking that up. All right, advanced diagnostics. Well, now. Ah, QR code time. Okay, now open the box. You'll do measurements and learn more about various signals in our current training set. Oh, whoop, 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 whoop. Many of them are standard signals you will find on most other objects. Okay, multimeter. Has four different modes. We'll start with DC mode. So dark. Which means direct current mode. Click on the handle on the left side of the meter or press up or down to select the DC mode. Handle. Okay, mode. Hertz. Oscillator. AC. DC. Direct current means constant signals, such as the power supply, slowly changing control signals, etc. These signals have no frequency and no shape, they're just voltages. Uh, measure port P plus of the controller by pointing at and holding left mouse. Now we're getting into the weeds of things. P plus, huh? Connector. Hmm? Huh? Um, okay, there we go. Uh, we, uh, you have to hold down the connector. P minus. Or I'm having trouble getting the connector on. Maybe it's just my positioning. Yeah, it's not. When I click on it, it's not really doing it. Okay, now it does. Uh, you have to be pretty precise, I guess. Zero. When the controller isn't starting up, you should always start by checking if it has power. If power is there, but the controller doesn't respond to the reset switch, you'll know it's the controller that is faulty. Uh, PLC is not fulfilling its function, but lack of power and faulty devices are the only reasons why it'd be completely unresponsive. Measure port A2. Again, I have trouble actually clicking on it. Still have trouble clicking on it. Oh, oh, there. Note that most of the time it shows zero volts, but from time to time it puts out 12 or negative 12. It's pretty constantly 12 actually. That's because this is a signal controlling the antenna arm motor. Well, it's very much turning it. Okay, I, I think I missed something about diagram that was supposed to tell me. But my conversational history doesn't have any of this stuff. My conversation history has betrayed me. Okay, anyway. Maybe... Okay, so uh, you have to click like below uh, to the bottom left of the little circle on the on the little ports this one shows zero volts because it's an alternating current meaning it has either a sine or square wave and a certain frequency since the signal is oscillating the average value is zero volts and that's what the meter will show because it's a dc meter okay so we'll switch to ac mode again and try the port again okay there we go now we see 12 volts of alternating current. Let's have a quick look at our diagram to see what kind of signal this is. Use B. As you can see, port A3 of the controller is connected to port AM2. So, port A3 of the controller to AM2 on the box. Now look at antenna symbol. Port AM2 is the angle sensor. The sensor signal from the antenna motor. 
Okay, this is why knowing how to read diagrams is important. Following the trail is the bread and butter of any diagnostic task. Or the breadcrumbs. Anyway, uh, closing the di close the diagram and go back to measuring. Oh no. Okay, P's, P plus again. No, it's not the... Okay, they're right there. As you can see, we got zero volts on the power supply of the controller. This is because power supply is constant voltage. So multimeter is not detecting any amplitude here. You always need to use DC mode for constant voltage and AC mode for dynamic signals. Otherwise, you'll get the wrong reading. You'll be surprised how many space mechanics keep making this particular mistake. Stay sharp. Go back to port A3 again. Keep measuring it using the AC. Just keep showing 12, yeah. It's because antennas need to be angled very precisely and using voltage to encode information from motor sensor is a bad idea. Voltage value is too susceptible to interference and cannot be used to pass precise values. Instead, we use the frequency of the signal to encode the values. Switch to Hertz. Okay, now let's probe the measurement. 200 kilohertz. See how the value keeps going up and down while the antenna angle changes? No. <laughs> no, I do not. It is, it is in fact a constant 200 kilohertz. I guess that means that the antenna angle isn't changing. Well, let, let's just verify. It seems like this one. Well, I mean, motor 1 is M2. Motor 2 is M1. And then transmit and receive is the whole TST, uh, well, uh, is actually TR, right? ATR arc. Receiving and transmitting signals, so that one. Which port on this controller is responsible for providing a signal for uh, antenna transmitter? Providing a signal for... I guess that means the transmitted signal. This was M1. I mean, it, this, this was definitely... we were talking about controlling the angle, so okay. So ATR A2 is a transmitted signal. Which port on this controller is responsible? They're actually giving me tests now. Which port uh, on this controller is responsible for reading the signal from the antenna receiver? Arc A3. Okay. Now check signal at port A2 of the PLC controller. Okay. Now oh, that one's changing. Well, that's good. Okay. So, oh, but that is the, the, the that is the right one, right? Yeah. I have checked the signal. Now what do I do? Maybe I should use the oscillator. Oh, okay, like that. This is the signal sent to the antenna because uh, to be transmitted. It's a sine wave because sine waves are the standard choice for long-range transmissions. As you can see, frequency keeps changing. That's our encoded data. You will see something similar on port A3 receiving signal from the antenna. Oh, A3 of M1. This is not the sign, this is a square wave. This is because square waves give a very sharp frequency reading. They may not be may not be as good for transmitting wirelessly, but they're very good for precise data sent locally by wire. Well, that's why we had 200 hertz for so long. Still 200 hertz? Yep. Very constant. Okay, so that's our intro to the multimeter, basically. Oh, we don't want to fly away. We have to close it up. Okay, let me get to the personal service station and pop up on things. 
So far, that's not been much of a problem. Okay, well, that is done. Electronics level 1 we can do now, but it's under 5,000. Let's see... Not any particularly lucrative mission available right now. But I think we should at least do one, and we've got another battery malfunction. I'll just quickly do it just to get money. Okay, I, I feel like for once I'm definitely at the wrong panel, right? It seems like it's this one, not the other side. Okay, fine. Yeah, th this can't be the right one. <laughs> this this is nothing for me to open. Let me go over to the other side. Oh, no, those don't look like screws. Oh, I can just remove it? Oh, no wonders. Uh, they didn't even, like, bolt it on or anything? That's weird. Let's make this quick. Okay. Battery. Okay, copper. We need a little bit more. Repair. Okay, we've got a good battery now. Well, we have to reset this thing, for sure. Oh, do they look like they need resetting? Let me see. They seem pretty warm already. Yeah, I didn't really need to reset those. Interesting. Maybe it was the other battery, because it was two batteries. Maybe this, the battery I replaced was like the backup battery or something, and they weren't running off of it. Okay, well, I want to get on with electronics level one. Okay, basic electronics training. About time. QR code on the box, box cover to get the diagram. Okay. There's one PLC controller and a lot of switches. Controller has three ports with cables connected to them, B1, B2, and B3. Okay. We can also see that there are four lights connected to the ports L1, L2, L3, and L4. And these lights don't produce electric signals, so this means that B1, B2, and B3 on the controller should be output ports controlling these lights and not import input ports receiving signals from elsewhere. This is just controlling lights? Well, I guess that's necessary too. Okay, measure ports B1, B2, and B3 with DC mode. 12 volts, 0 volts, 12 volts, 0 volts, that's B3. 12 volts most of the time for B2. 12 volts most of the time for B1. B1 is always giving 12 volts. B2 is flashing slowly and B3 is flashing fast. Okay. I will accept that. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, my con conversation history just doesn't keep track of things anymore. Oh no, please keep telling me. We will not be needing multimeter anymore, so we put it away. Let's talk about triple breakers now. There are two of them here. So. That's the LBS1 and LBS2. Pretty much switches. There's a lot of switches here. They have three ports on each side and a switch between them. There are no dedicated input-output ports. These breakers work both ways. Close the diagram and let's look at LBS1. Look at the markings on these switches. Okay, they're very easy to read. Well, you can see there are switches. Switch is off, the red markings will be visible. When it's on, there'll be green markings. Okay, let's flip all the switches on LBS1 until we see green markings on them. Otherwise, the signals from the PLC controller are not going anywhere. So flick, flick, flick. Okay. Now let's look at the diagram again. There's another kind of switch here. Look at the symbol LMS4. There's a multi-state switch. 
connecting port B with one of its A ports. This is also a switch. It has no input or output direction. Can be used as a selector or a redirector of electric signals. Close the diagram and turn the LMS switch to position A2. Um, okay. Now that constant 12 volt signal from port B1 is passing through the breaker into port A4. Huh? Of a multi state switch. This port is now passed to B, port B, and from there to light TL4. Okay, I, uh, no. Um, that, that was A2 that we selected. Maybe, 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 does it want me to go to A4? Because then we can get A4. Or does it want me to be on A2? Because I thought it said A2 before. I don't have any evidence. Okay. A2 will give us the A1 signal, which is from B1, which is the constant one. The B3 is the quick flashing one. So if we did A4, that would set the LMS4 to be quick flashing. So A2 was constant. This one is quick flashing. This is constant. This one is slow. And this one is fast. Okay, but do you want it on A2 or A4 game? <laughs> uh, I already looked at the diagram, but okay. Okay, well it seems to be wanting 4, so we'll stick to 4. Oh no, but it's highlighted 2 here. Or L4. Well, okay, but okay, fine. 2. Okay, we'll, we'll turn it back to 2. It's time for a test. Let's see if you can make, like, TL1, the red one, be turned on permanently. Okay. Uh, like, TL2 to flash slow. And TL3 to flash fast. There we go. Should be. Oh, wait. But we have to... Uh... Oh, uh, L4 has a direct line. We have to switch these breakers on for them to start working. But uh, this one is slow. Which one are you? You're one. You're three. Oh, this one is three. This one is two. Okay. I thought they were in order. Yeah, I thought they would go one, two, three, four, but no, they've got one, three, two, four. That's not what it shows in the diagram. But you can see that's LMS1, LMS3, LMS2, LMS4. They're trying to trick me. Anyway. Okay. Set up everything so all lights are permanently switched on. Okay. Uh, that was A2, wasn't it? Okay, we, we can turn on lights. It is the first thing you learn, right? If you're playing with an Arduino, so... It's fair. Okay. So, do we keep the lights running, I guess? Eternal proof that... I did my... Electrical training properly. Well, at least as long as this satellite continues running. Okay, mission finalized. Okay, so next time we'll do electronics level 2 and level 3, and then we'll just be focusing on the missions and see what they're like. A trivial drone task should be interesting, but I'll hold off until next time for that. So, with that, Thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed this video, if you did please do press like, if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.